Good afternoon. This is your County Executive Ed Day, and we're here to give up, give up your bi-weekly COVID-19 update here in Rockland County. Um, again, first off, make sure you have a pen and paper handy. There'll be some information given out during the broadcast. We will recap some of it at the end, but we don't want you to miss anything because this information can be very important. I'm here again today with John Lyon, my communications director. Of course, you know him as the man behind the curtain. Uh, and he has been fielding your questions all afternoon. And so uh, we're going to start, we're going to get right into it. John? Okay. Um, <clears throat> question on everyone's mind. Are we going to start phase two on Tuesday? Um, and once again, what's the current schedule for the following phases that come after this? Got it. Okay. Uh, yes, Rockland County and the entire Mid-Hudson region, it's a regional approach. Seven counties are part of the same Mid-Hudson region, have met all the metrics required and we're entering into phase two, uh, in, and that will be Tuesday on um, June 9th, as was mentioned. Uh, in brief, once you've met the metrics to enter phase one, which we did late last month, um, you continue that trajectory, uh, if, you, if you continue the trajectory downward, or at least level, you do not slide back, you will proceed going into the following phases. Uh, in terms of when we enter phase two, as things currently stand, as I said, June 9th is when we'll enter into it. Phase three right now is slated for June 23rd, and phase four is slated for July 7th. Um, however, I want to let you all know that I and the other county executives in the region uh, who are in that regional control room that you've heard about have been making the case to speed up the process and do it safely. We're not looking to be reckless here. We're looking to be to do it the proper way. I'm going to get into something that we're doing here in Rockland. It's very unique that will show you exactly how we can back that up with actions, not just words. Um, our numbers right now look very good, very promising. Uh, the darker days clearly uh, we've turned a corner from. Um, I just want to let you know we have a resource that I was referring to uh, that you will be able to see the numbers for yourself. And again, this is a Rockland-based program, uh, not a regional-based program, which is what you see on the um, New York State Forward Dot .ny.gov dot website. Uh, today our health department, uh, our planning, our departments of planning and health work diligently uh, together to launch the Rockland County Unpause Dashboard. This new dashboard tracks the seven metrics used by New York State to determine reopening status as part of the New York Forward Plan. The new dashboard will help to keep Rockland residents aware of how we're doing locally in regard to the metrics. And look, the region, I understand the regional approach for a number of reasons, obviously. It's important from a state perspective. It's important for Connecticut, Jersey, and that region outside of New York State. But here in Rockland, what we care about for obvious reasons is how are we doing here? It's critically important that we get information to you directly so you have a, a comfort, you have an understanding of exactly what's going on. Because we have said before, as this opening uh, transpires, we are keeping a very tight eye on the metrics and, and what's going on because if we see a spike, we want to address it immediately. If we have to alter our, our, our what we're doing, we have to do it immediately. We'll be calling contact traces in at that point. So there are a lot of things that will go if we see those numbers change. Um, the more information allows each of us to make more informed choices about our own actions and our own behavior, that's important to our residents. Uh, this data is a key tool to the residents, businesses, and our local municipalities. The data is retrieved, it is tabulated, and updated each weekday afternoon on the dashboard. Uh, this is the same data used by New York State to determine the regional metrics. And this is what it will look like when you pick it up on our rocklandgov.com website. Are we on the right spot, John? Yep. Um, this is basically it here. Um, you, have, you have the various, various hospital capacity um, hospital, new hospitalizations, uh, decline in deaths, uh, decline in, in, in local uh, total hospitalizations. You can see how the numbers are trending and they're trending in a positive manner. So you'll be able to take a look at that and uh, get comfortable with it. Um, the links, as I said, are on the Rockland County Department of Health's COVID-19 page. Can they access this from the main page? Yes. Okay, you can also access this from the main page once you click on to Rockland uh, Gov, Rockland gov.com, rocklandgov.com, get confused after a while. Um, you know, the bottom line is this, right here, we've, we've spoken a lot about um, safety, safety first and people always. That's not just a, a phrase, that's not just talk. 
We're backing that up by able to give you information so you can see exactly how things are going here because we recognize that's how important it is to you after the, the, um, the, the crisis we've gone through. Uh, people need a sense of comfort as to what's going on. We want to provide all the information we can so you feel better about what you're doing, how you are re-engaging yourself and getting back to life as normal. And I'm proud to say I, we have no reason to believe no, any other county has even done something like this. So this may be a first in the state of New York. Not the first time Rockland County's been first, and I'm very, very proud of that, obviously. Um, and just to reiterate, that link uh, will be posted in the comments section after this video Good. wraps yep. up. Um, and I go in my office and do it. <laughs> Uh, on to the next question. How are camps, summer camps, going to be able to keep children safe? What precautions will they be taking? A lot of them are going to be common sense. Uh, New York State has not yet released the, sa released the safety guidelines for summer camps, but I, I, the bottom line is this. To be likely, it's going to include a, number, a limited number of campers, uh, attempts at social distancing, the wearing of masks, and the need for stronger sanitary measures. Uh, when these guidelines are released, of course, they'll be posted on the forward.ny.gov website uh, under the state guidelines, statewide guidelines section. Um, as a reminder, summer camps will, so, will still be required to file the appropriate permits in addition to the safety plans and the affirmations that are expected by New York State or required by New York State because of the uh, coronavirus uh, uh, crisis. And they'll be doing everything possible to make sure the children are, who attend are protected. We met with the Department of Health today, uh, and this was one, one of the many topics we discussed uh, as it relates to um, uh, safety and health in this county. I remind people, your health department has done an amazing job here in Rockland County. Two years running, Rockland County has been named the safety, I'm sorry, probably safest county in the state too, but well, I can't say that for sure. But certainly, it, it absolutely has been named the most, the healthiest county in the state of New York. And be, be amazed, amazing is that we had a measles epidemic last year and we still came in first place. So that's kind of work that they do. Um, but the other thing too is I know many parents are, are, are a little set off by this because of how long it took. Again, as we had said before, this is something we've spoken about many times in the control room. We cannot respond to certain things until there's an, an, an approval done by, by Albany. So, um, you know, we're trying to get the word back to them. The number of topics we've spoken to the control room um, uh, members who represent the governor uh, about urgency, timelines, time sensitivity. Uh, that's how we work here in Rockland. That's how we expect others to work. So we're getting it back after pushing as hard as we can. Um, and speaking of information that we've been waiting to receive from Albany, uh, what is going on with pools? Okay. Has New York State issued guidance in that effect yet? Not really. However, let, let me be clear. I've gotten a lot of phone calls. And I think uh, I can understand some of them. Some of them I think is uh, they're not quite sure. It's only verbal right now. They, they haven't seen anything in writing. You have HOA boards who want to make sure everything's 100% right. Let me be perfectly clear. Uh, about a week or so ago, we had a direct conversation with the governor's staff. The governor's staff um, on a, one of the control room calls. We were told directly that effective immediately, the openings of condo HOA pools, uh, municipal pools, private club pools are absolutely authorized. Um, the, and what they told us also, they are awaiting guidelines. Now the guidelines have not been put up yet. I can't answer to that. And frankly, I, I do not dare try to answer to that. Um, I have every confidence the Department of Health will be issuing permits in the near term. Uh, we've discussed this matter together. Um, they expect to, to get the necessary guidance. The permits will be issued. You will be able to get into the pools in your, if you have one in your, uh, whether it be a club or whether it be a municipality, whether it be a condo board uh, or an HOA. Now, understand something. It is not a mandate to open a pool. I have actually had some... Um, some of our uh, people have called us who are the boards who don't want the pools to be open. And again, that is an independent decision that's made by an HOA board, uh, by a municipality, um, by a private club. It is their call. We are only passing along the fact that they are authorized to do so. And also as it relates to the, the health department, the health department will issue permits, and it's really all under the sanitary code. These are issues such as chlorine levels, things of that nature, cleanliness, uh, equipment. They are not involved in the operations of the pools. That falls to the state orders. So right now, like I said, the authorization is there. 
uh, it can be done, but the decision rests totally with whatever entity is is uh, overseeing that particular pool area. Okay, um, and moving on to a slightly different subject, do you know, uh, this person very specifically asked, when I will be legally be allowed to enter a store to buy a new pair of shoes? I guess their shoes might be wearing out. I, um, I haven't checked mine. Um, it rained yesterday, I didn't get my feet wet, so I guess I'm in good shape, but Okay, we go from pools to shoes. Um, retail, retail like shoe stores, is included in phase two, which we enter on Tuesday. So Tuesday, the person who called in, you can go out and run out and buy your shoes. I don't know what time the store is open, but you can do it. Uh, right now, however, our malls are in, that are enclosed, our shopping centers, are specific, not specifically included in any phase. One of these things that we just don't understand, frankly, it's nonsensical. Uh, we have... Um, considerable considerable play, um, time and resources preparing to reopen in a way that's safe for both people and for and employ the shoppers. Um, this is what the shopping centers have been doing. So we've seen some of these plans already and they're very involved. Um, one of our local enclosed malls, the largest one obviously, is the Palisade Center. Um, they employ thousands of Rocklanders. Uh, they contribute millions of property tax and sales tax to municipalities and to local school district. There is no difference between allowing the retail stores and enclosed malls to open in phase two as compared to retail strip malls or other businesses. In fact, and you probably know this if you take a step back, there is often more open space within an enclosed mall than a strip mall. So, uh, you know, we're, we've been urging um, the governor's staff during our regional control room calls to allow malls to reopen as we enter phase two or at, or at minimum capacity when they're able to reopen. Um, I will note that we've had some of our local elected officials, I think Assemblyman Ken Zabrowski, has written in support of this notion. Um, it, it doesn't make any sense. So we're trying to get those the malls open so they can, they can re-engage in the economy so you can go back to the stores like you have done before and, and, um, and just purchase things such as shoes and golf clubs and things of that nature. Um, for those people who didn't hear the news yesterday, restaurants are now allowed to open for outdoor dining as part of phase two. Could you clarify if servers need to wear plastic gloves? Okay, uh, I'm going to just look at some of the notes here that I have for the, because I don't want to misstate anything, okay? Um, it is mandatory to ensure that staff wear face coverings at all times and that they practice hand hygiene and, and use bare hand barriers consistent with state and local sanitary codes. If employees wear gloves during non-food preparation activities, they, they must ensure they replace the gloves frequently. Uh, gloves can actually transmit things because once you touch something, you touch another thing and touch another thing, you're now transferring whatever you touched the first time, the second time to the third item. So um, they, they encourage to change them frequently and make sure that when you use gloves, you're using them for one purpose, not multi-purpose. You can't cook with gloves and don't then take cash. It's just not logical, it makes no sense. However, if employees do not wear gloves, they must ensure they frequently wash their hands with soap and water. Um, they have to ensure that employees who are bussing tables wash their hands with soap and water. And they must wear gloves, replacing gloves before and after cleaning and disinfecting tables. My understanding under the guidelines is that servers are not required to wear gloves, and there's a lot of, of data behind that. As I mentioned earlier, there's a transference issue with gloves. Um, wearing gloves all over is really not helpful. You have, you, there are people who maintain, including, including nurses in particular, who maintain you are better served in if you cannot have a single-use scenario where your glove, your glove is on, you're preparing food, and all you're touching is food. If you're going to wear gloves and you're shopping and you're picking up boxes and you're touching your phone, your phone touches your face, you touch your face, um, it's obviously not gonna work. Um, the link to the complete guidance that I'm reading here will be posted in the comments after we're done here today. But I wanna reassure everyone, all of the businesses that are, that are open are required to create a business safety plan and file affirmations with New York State before they can reopen. We've been very clear about this. We're getting the word out through our towns and villages, our local chambers of commerces, our business associations, 
everybody is becoming much more well aware of this because now they want to open, they're going to have to file that paperwork. Why? Because we expect businesses, and we have every reason to know, to believe that they will, to make sure that their employees and their customers are safe. Okay. Um, do you know when the 10 person gathering limit will be lifted or possibly increased? <sighs> I, I honestly don't know when that limit's going to be raised. Um, the state of New York still currently limits social gatherings to 10 or fewer individuals. Um, you know, the reality is that I don't know how long that is going to be realistic. We are now re-engaging our economy. We are now allowing for more things to be done. I don't see how much longer the 10-person limit can be maintained. That's just my own opinion. And I think if we think it through logically, I think most people will agree with that observation. Um, you know, we recognize, um, the Mid-Hudson Region County Executives and myself, that more, ne more than ever, uh, it is critical to allow larger gatherings to begin to take place, and especially in some particular areas. Uh, we have called for uh, the churches, our synagogues, our mosques, and other houses of worship to be allowed to hold services at 25% capacity. That is very easily accomplished. It is not a, it's not a huge leap. Um, but there's an underlying reason for this. We truly need to re-engage our spiritual leaders, <clears throat> excuse me, um, to help us heal from the trauma that has followed the death in Minneapolis of George Floyd. Uh, now more than ever, it is critically important that there is a re-engagement there. I will tell you directly that we have been very, um, very strong on this in these conversations, that this is not something that needs to be weighed and thought out and, and run up a flagpole. This is a situation where we've had numerous demonstrations. We've had, we've had a tragedy in Minneapolis, obviously. A lot, of people, a lot of people are upset, they're angry, and so far here in Rockland, things have remained calm. And I, and I credit the people of Rockland, no matter how much they are hurting right now, hang, angry they are, they have maintained that composure. They have made their statements calmly and peacefully. But again, the, 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 the ministers, the, the, the men, men and women of the cloth have told us that they, they want to be able to help and they see a defined need to be more engaged. So we are, have been pleading with our, 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 the Albany Connection, our, our, our staff members of the governor's office, to please make a decision and get this done. Uh, it, it, we want to make sure that we have everything in place that will that'll, that'll ensure that we have a safe county here and that we people are expressing themselves in a, in a moderate manner. Is there anything that you can tell me about group homes? Uh, people who have family members there are looking to be able to, to visit those they haven't been able to for the last right. several months. It, uh, another source of frustration, another issue we've brought up numerous times. Um, uh, we've had to have the conversations directly with folks uh, who have expressed this to us, and it's, it's painful, it really is. You feel for people like that who are going through this right now. And it's unfortunate that I have no new information on group homes. Uh, the last info that I have was on the, the New York State Office of um, People with Developmental Disabilities, that they were working with the New York State Department of Health to establish a process to safely um, begin returning to regular activities, including a phased-in approach of the resumption of programs and visitations. I don't know what it's gonna take to get this across, and this is where the source of frustration lies for the county executives. There have been some good things done in the control room, but there are more things that really need to be done. This is not something that should be protracted. This is something that you know what has to happen, you know what the mission is, uh, you even got a sense of what you have to do to get there, and it's still uh, wallowing, and it's just very, very frustrating. Uh, our Office of People with Disabilities is encouraging family members and other interested parties to sign up to receive weekly um, regular updates from our Office of People with Disabilities. That is, uh, the New York State um, website that has that is www.opwdd.ny.gov. I will repeat that, www.opwdd.ny.gov. John will have this up in the comments section when we're done yet. Um, and a question that's been repeated a few times in the chat today, in addition to being submitted earlier,
can you please get us an answer on a social distance graduation? Uh, the specific request earlier was for the field in Pearl right. River. Right. Uh, this uh, earlier today, those who might have heard the governor say that the only dry, only drive in and drive through graduations for students would be allowed. Now that's not new news. You may recall if you've seen this be us before. We had this discussion in the, with the control personnel, and we were told directly that what you could have a drive-in type scenario where you, if you have a setup in a field where everybody's in their cars with a screen, if they want to put something in the screen, but picture a drive-in movie, that type of scenario was, was authorized back then. And again, this has got to be 10 days ago, maybe, John? Mm -hmm. I mean, thereabouts. And also the drive-by, um, I might say drive-through, drive-by, where um, there may be uh, you know, a handoff of a, a, a diploma, a caravan of vehicles. Obviously, that's something where local, local police would have to help out on because of traffic issues and, and, and the like. Uh, those are the only two ways that could be done. Um, the, the details of how this would be done as a governor announced today was not specified. What I'm doing here is trying to translate what we're hearing on these calls and because we're not, we're not giving heads up about what goes on TV when the governor gets on, on TV. Uh, but I did see today on News 12 in Maradick, um, their high school was beginning to hold a series of car parades uh, through the community to celebrate the graduating seniors. Uh, the school district uh, what, uh, was encouraging the entire community to come outside with their homes, spread out along the route, and cheer and congratulate the seniors as they drive by. So this is certainly an option that could be considered here locally. Uh, there's no reason why that can't be done. Some of you may have seen this happen with birthday celebrations. Uh, th 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 this has been done before, so again, this is something that can be done. It's not your traditional gra graduation, I understand that. Um, the, the latest development we've seen, and again, let's go back to the governor's first comments about well, taking, this, taking this regionally, meaning Jersey, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, states that abut New York State. Um, New Jersey, one more time, has now done something that we are that the governor here is saying we can't do yet locally socially distanced graduations effective july 6th now my guess here and this is truly a guess is that uh th they waited long enough for that's almost in phase four uh, in new york state's numbers um they're waiting a little longer so this date of july 6th is well after the typical closure of school and i think the guesswork in new jersey if i can put myself in the mind of governor murphy for a moment is that if he waits a couple of weeks longer, uh, he will be more comfortable in saying, let's have a socially distanced uh, graduation that resembles more of what I saw with my two sons we're envisioning here in Rockland County. So that came up, and of course, now people are very upset about that. The bottom line is that um, I understand it's disappointing. Uh, I would feel horrible if I was a parent of a high school senior right now um, the best we can do here right now is make the best of whatever is offered up. Advocate, uh, but advocate for that in-person, socially distanced graduations be able to take place. I would suggest to everyone who's listening, especially those who have a stake in this, that let's make that point together. We have said it in the control room. Um, I suggest emails to the governor would be helpful at this point. Um, if you want to do something that's more along the lines of what's going to happen on July 6th uh, in New Jersey, but uh, look, we, I'm, I'm a member of PTA, I'm a PTA Life Award winner. Uh, I'm used to fighting for my kids and fighting for other kids in this community. It's been going for a number of years now. And this is what we have to do. We get things done by advocating. That's what happens here uh, in, in this county. It's been done many, many times. So I would suggest that would be something that would be a good idea to do. Um, I think we're just about coming to the end of our broadcast. Um, I do have some numbers here. Um, the uh, pause hotline. This is the New York State line for things that are not are not being done properly. Uh, things that you've seen that you know should not be going on, uh, at least from your perspective. Uh, you can call the pause hotline. It's a twenty four seven line. They will take your information. They will vet it. Make sure that what you are seeing is exactly what um, is is happening uh, and is not allowable. What they will do is they will contact three points here in Rockland County, a sheriff our district attorney and our, our Department of Health, our Deputy Commissioner of Department of Health. That number is 833-789-0470, 833-789-0470. This would be more for items that are stagnant. 
This is not for people walking or going into a place that is happening one time. People not socially distancing, but they're moving. That would be a, that would be a call to the local police department. Um, the other number is our, our Rockland our Rockland County Health Department hotline. Health Department hotline, eight four five two three eight one nine five six eight four five two three eight one nine five six. They can answer your complaints during the day weekdays from eight to five, basically. Uh, and the final phone number, uh, the State Department of Health hotline. Uh, you can make you can make re um, appointments to get tested if you like, and they'll answer other related questions for COVID-19 to you. Their number is 888-364-3065. Again, 888-364-3065. And now the more, somewhat to some degree, maybe even more important, other websites that you can go to. Um, the governor's orders are at ny.gov ny.gov the uh, website that really is controlling much of what we're seeing here right now that you may want to visit if you have any specific questions if you are a business uh, if you are a, a resident you want to see what the business is supposed to be doing uh, that's at forward.ny.gov forward.ny.gov and finally your own county uh, website rocklandgov.com rocklandgov.com as i said before there's a lot of information there for you uh, not just about COVID-19 about services office of the aging um, trying to get masks to our seniors same with our veteran services agency doing the same thing for those who serve, serve this country uh, so there's a lot of information on that website a lot of things happening there uh, again i want to acknowledge that new that new dashboard which i showed you before um, acknowledge our uh, planning team our planning team uh, Doug Schutz is our acting, acting commissioner there, and Dr. Rupert and her team in the Department of Health for the amazing work they've done to bring you current information because it's important that you know what we're doing here to make sure we're taking every step possible above and beyond what the state's expecting of us to make sure that you are safe as possible, that you can get back into the uh, your economy, you can go back to trying to do the things that we so enjoy here in Rockland County, and that is so important. But everybody is starting to recognize the fact this is not a matter of flipping a switch and coming back out. There are a lot of concerns, a lot of worries, understandably so. You're not, you're not crazy. Everybody does have a level of concern. It's just a matter of where that level rises to. Our job, as I see it, is, re is to repeat to you, make sure you understand that here in Rockland County, it is safety first and people always. And that's what we expect from everybody as we process through this. We are going, we're getting to a better place. Um, I, we talked about this when things were the dark days. I told you then, we're gonna get to a better place. We're now on that track, we're traveling that route now. So let's support those local businesses. Next week, you can go to dinner. Uh, outdoor dining's will be available to you. It's, uh, maybe get a, a sense of what it used to be like here in Rockland. It was, it's hard to believe it's been three months and not three or four years. It's really been that long of a ride, but things are getting better. I know we're going to be okay. We're going to be better than okay. And uh, the weather's supposed to be really good the next few days. It's supposed to be a nice weekend. So I will wish you a happy weekend a day early. Um, and uh, until then, we'll see you next week. And we'll bring you another update. Thank you very much.